Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thanks so much for joining me. If this is your first time here, please subscribe to the channel and check out the other videos. And if you're here for a second, third, or fourth time, thank you so much for coming back and getting creative. All right, guys, another fun desert painting for my first time painters. So grab your supplies, turn on your favorite music, and as always, take your progress photos. Now for this painting, you are more than welcome to switch out any colors that you want to be more to your liking. Um, but I'll be doing some desert colors here and uh, just taking it one step at a time. So we're going to start with yellow and white mixture first, about equal parts white and yellow. We're going to go about halfway up the canvas, create a line. This is going to be our horizon line. And then we're going to be seeing it doesn't have to be perfectly straight. Mine had a little bit of a wobble. <laughs> That's okay. And then we're, from here, we're going to kind of create this abstract shape. And then we're going to build on this abstract shape with our darker, uh, warm colors. So again, this is the yellow and white mixture. I'm using kind of longer uh, back and forth brush strokes, but also creating this kind of crazy abstract design that will be kind of using darker colors to go around the edge. So here, grabbing a little bit of that yellow, going right around the edge. I am overlapping the light yellow just a little bit with this. And as we move from color to color, I want you to do the same thing, just slightly overlap the new color with the prior color. Do a touch of blending and just kind of play with creating your design. If you need to go back to the white or another color, go right ahead and do that. I wanted to make this center a little bit lighter, so I went back and grabbed a little bit more white. And then now I'm gonna add a touch of orange to my yellow mixture, kind of a yellow orange. Your call, how light or dark you make this. If it does not have to match mine exactly, just you're going to a little bit more of an orange color compared to the yellow you were just using. And again, overlapping the prior color a little bit. And if you happen to be on a stretched canvas, when you reach the edge of your canvas, carry the color right around the side. And it looks really nice when you hang it on the wall, having that color wrap around. And if you have to make your shade of orange or any shade of color today more than once, do not stress about getting the exact same shade every single time. Uh, some of the most dynamic sunsets that we see and are inspired by have such a range and variety of color, and that just makes them even more fun to look at. So now I'm grabbing that direct orange a little bit darker, and again going around the perimeter of the yellow orange we just applied. And again, if you want more orange in your sky and no red, or you want more red, feel free to switch out any of these steps. So now doing the red yellow or red orange combo, um, kind of what I call a burnt orange, real pretty, filling in pretty much the remaining canvas space above the horizon line. And again, anything that you want to do that's a little different than the video, go right ahead and do that. And if you want to go back to any of the other prior colors, you want to do this while your background is wet and do everything that you want to your background before you move into doing the ground, the road and the silhouette designs that we'll be doing. Pause the video as often as you need to, to just kind of observe where I've placed certain things, or if you need to um, just take a moment while you are painting. And here we are, I'm going back into some of that yellow orange, just kind of doing a little bit of blending, play with this. You can go back and forth as much as you want. And again, remember to breathe. You might be realizing that your brush is kind of shaky. That does mean you're holding your breath. So laugh at yourself for a minute, take a big inhale and keep on painting. All right, so a good spot to pause the video. Like I said, do everything that you want to your background now before you move below that horizon line. And we're gonna be making a light gray that is white with a tiny amount of black. Again, your shade of gray can be lighter or darker than what I am creating. And we're gonna put the road in there. We're gonna go up to the horizon line and kind of pick a point 
and then curve um, that line down towards the bottom. And same thing with the neck. So you're making kind of this curved triangle to where it goes off to a point on the horizon line and then gets wider at the bottom of the painting. Then we're going to fill this in with that light gray. And again, if you have to mix your color two or three times, don't stress about the exact same shade of gray because here I'm going to grab some white, slap it on there in the beginning, in the front part of the road, and then mix it in. This is called wet on wet blending. Use light pressure with your brush as you are doing this kind of blending. All right, coming along nicely. We're going to pause that video, take a progress photo. And then we're just going to kind of get our next color on there. We're going to use the black, fill in the remaining space of paint. Oh, I'm sorry, the red black. Sorry, we're going to do black next. So take that red, pull some red aside. A tiny amount of black is going to go a long way to make a red black. And we're going to do our rock formations on the horizon line first, and then we'll fill in the space with black. I got a step ahead of myself. So going right above um, that horizon line, we're going to create kind of just this crazy rock formation. If you have something specific you want to reference, feel free to do that. If not, we're just going above that horizon line, kind of creating some different shapes, using light pressure with that brush, and then we will be filling it in. And we will be layering some other things on top of this. You're doing great. And I am leaving at the outline so you can see what I've drawn. And again, pause the video if you need to. Uh, take a screenshot of the video. And you can zoom in a little bit closer if you wanted to see some more details. Adjust what you might need to as you are learning uh, painting, as you're learning a new skill. It's okay to take things that you've learned from other courses or other people into your current learning. And it was actually one of my students that was like, yeah, I take a screenshot and then I can zoom in and see some of your details better. And I was like, that's awesome. I need to start telling my students to do that. So now just filling in still with that red black mixture. So that way our horizon line kind of disappears, but it is very, um, much the essence of the desert of Monument Valley and Bryce Canyon and the Grand Canyon area. Beautiful place to be if you have never been there. Definitely well worth a trip. I used to live in Sedona, Arizona and hiked many of those uh, mountains. So now grabbing a little bit of red, just kind of doing a little bit of a highlight on there. No specific exact space that we're putting those, but just kind of breaking up that color and not making it as dark as before. Then we'll clean the brush, do any final little details that you might need to your uh, horizon line rock formation. And then we're going to grab that black, fill in the bottom space, uh, the remaining spa white space of the canvas. And then we'll do another set of rock formations and then a set of cactus. So good spot to pause the video, take a progress photo. I refreshed my black paint. And then we're going to be filling in from that horizon line um, down to where it kind of butts up to our road. So filling in all that space. All right. And once you've filled that in, I do recommend letting it dry. And then we're going to be moving into um, another set of rock formations with the black paint and the pointy brush. And these will um, actually put the birds in first. I don't usually do that. That was interesting. So put some birds in the sky if you want. And then we're going to go above that horizon line for a bit, a few more of the rock formations and even a few um, silhouettes of some saguaro cactus. There we go. Nice. And I like using the smaller pointy brush because these aren't going to be crazy huge. They will overlap um, the red black kind of rock formations that we put at the horizon line, but it just keeps it so it's not such a flat space and it also helps kind of create distance. And I realize that with the wet paint, the glare from my uh, light kind of affects the interpretation. So feel free to watch this part. 
Um, towards the end of the video, I'll show it where it's dried so you don't see that reflection. And you can do a screenshot and kind of zoom in to see uh, more of the design that I did. But these are just like little mesas, little um, simple rock formations that I put on there. And then here is going to be the saguaro cactus. So the saguaro cactus is almost kind of like a stick figure. You draw the central line and then give your cactus some arms on either side. And they generally have multiple arms. But just try to think of your saguaro cactus like stick figures. And I think I was trying to decide where I wanted another one without overlapping too much of the rock formation. So you may be doing the same thing. Trust your instincts on where you feel like you should put it. And it is okay to overlap some of the other background areas. We will be doing some saguaro cactus with yellow and green mixture as well. So pause that video, take your progress photo. We are done with the black. We're going to move into yellow with a, uh, actually we're going to do the yellow dots on the street first, and then we're going to do the saguaro cactus. So the yellow dots just down the center. If you want to do the double line or the single dots, whatever you feel like doing. If you even want to put a motorcycle or a car on here or a horse and buggy, feel free to add that to your painting. There we go. And another spot to pause that video. Now we'll move into that saguaro cactus. And I'm going to do a yellow-green mixture. Your call, how much yellow, how much green, or if it's direct green. I do like this because it gives a nice contrast to the very dark uh, red, black, and black uh, silhouette designs that we have on there. Again, this cactus, think of it as a stick figure, the center of the cactus, and then give it some arms. And we are definitely overlapping the other background elements with this. Again, kind of creating that magical illusion of space on a flat 2D surface. And if you want to add some dash marks for where the little agave are, they kind of just radiate out from um, the center point on the ground and just little dash, dash marks. Just kind of add those wherever you may like them. And then I believe we're going to put one more saguaro cactus in here. And that will be the conclusion of our painting. Feel free if you want to add more cactus than I do or anything else that you want to your painting, go right ahead and do that. If your brush is shaky, exhale as you touch the brush to the canvas, and that will help. And here I realize it's hard to see with the light, adding a little bit of the yellow highlights on the left-hand side, and just adding those final details. So thanks again for painting and taking time out of your day to get creative. Please don't wait too long to do your next painting. And until then, cheers. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the process of painting and I hope you are happy with how your paintings turned out. I'm really proud of you for getting creative. As you're uploading these to social media, please tag me at or hashtag paintwithlovejoy or email me your pictures paintwithlovejoy at gmail.com. I really enjoy seeing them. Um, I try to post them on social media to encourage other beginner painters um, to try the process of painting but please share this with your community as well. Anybody who is kind of scared to paint, share your experience with them and let them know kind of how much you benefited from it and how much you enjoyed the process. So kind of share, share the fun. Um, with that being said, if you have any comments, questions, feedback, things that you want me to paint in the future, please leave a comment. I try to respond to everybody as quickly as I can and any of the future suggestions for paintings, I add that to my production list and get to them as quickly as I can. So in the meantime, please keep getting creative. Uh, let me know how you're doing. And until next time, cheers.